Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor. I'm sitting here watching the Masters because I was looking at the Weather Channel and the um, the the wet the massive storm that's coming towards Augusta where they're playing the Masters is going. I don't think they're going to finish the Masters today with the major weather that's headed towards them. So I was just uh, so that for those of you that don't know, they're already running the Masters. They started early. But I was I was sitting here looking at this, and they're they're going to get hit with a massive set of storms probably sooner rather than later. So I imagine they're going to have to try to figure out how to play this thing Monday and Tuesday. But anyway, okay, there is so much news for a Sunday today. I mean, I found so much information; it's not even funny. First thing I wanted to start with is the Weiss ratings. IMF head Christine Lagarde says crypto is clearly shaking the system of banking. Calls for more regulation. Christine Lagarde, the master of the obvious, um, and she's she's talking about in in the and I showed you I had a the video clip held up where she showed up, said it was shaking the system. But the part that was interesting is what XRP Deutschland says here. She also says it's definitely not Bitcoin. And I thought that was very interesting, and a lot of people also did. <clears throat> okay, next. This is from XRP Lighting the Way. AdX Lighting the Way. Um, in, in, interesting Bitcoin bonds. And he tweeted me this article right here. Arthur Hayes, BitMEX, is considering issuing short-term Bitcoin bonds. In a recent interview, Arthur Hayes, co-founder, CEO of crypto derivatives exchange BitMEX, talked uh, about his company, and in particular mentioning that he was looking into the idea of BitMEX issuing some kind of short-term Bitcoin bond. Um, he said this during an uh, interview with analysts. But anyway, as we keep saying, everything's going to be tokenized. Uh, how how that all comes together, everybody doesn't know yet, but we just know that they're working on it, they're doing it now, and every day I'm starting to see new things tokenized. But in the end, everything will be tokenized. And your digital assets, if they're good ones, will be, will be traded alongside these tokenized assets. That's why digital assets are the biggest as asset class of them all and will swallow all other as asset classes. Okay, let me see. Okay, X this out. Also from X, at X Lighting the Way, the debate for day trading versus hodling. You may be surprised, and he, he's got a really interesting chart here I've never seen before. Um, look at, we'll just look at this one here. This is 10,000 invested, a trader less than a year. This is a, a holder, okay? Taxes paid over five years. This assumes, um, down here it says, assuming crypto market has a 50 time performance distributed over the next five years. Taxes paid by the holder is 110, the trader 90. Final portfolio after five years post taxes 328 versus 389 by holder and here's your here's your returns and if you look down here this is um this is if you invested a million dollars your portfolio as a holder 34 million you've got a 3300 percent return and a trader would have an 11 million with a 1053 percent return that's interesting folks makes you want to hold right. <clears throat> All right, next, I got this from XRP Big Time. IMF, now this is interesting, folks. IMF and World Bank launch private blockchain and cryptocurrency. Now, before any of you get freaked out and you think that um, the IMF is launching their own coin and XRP cannot have a chance at being used by the IMF, this is literally, they're calling it learning coin. This is literally a coin not for anybody to make money. It's going to be used within the IMF. And it's for the purpose of teaching the people at the IMF how effective digital assets can be and how they can use them. So as the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank have launched a private blockchain and quasi-cryptocurrency called Learning Coin to better understand the emerging technology, the Washington-based multinational agencies stress that Learning Coin will be inaccessible outside the World Bank and the IMF. 
and have no monetary value whatsoever and is therefore not a real cryptocurrency like Bitcoin. However, its development has helped staff its staff become more familiar with the principles like the distributed ledgers that underlie crypto assets, possible use cases like smart contracts and enhanced transparency and challenges like facilitating money, la money laundering. So folks, it's starting to get exciting. I'm drinking my coffee, sorry. <clears throat> All right, next I got this from XRP Rackin' Tour at Crypto Cubanito. And he sends this. Now, this is a fascinating article, folks. Research is from a website called Black, blacklistednews.com. What this is, is it, it's talking about how a research study was done on the Wall Street mega banks, and then basically how all of the financial media ignored the story. So I'm going to go and I'm going to show you the actual research report. Rester but the title of this article, Research Study, <coughs> On ongoing crime spree by Wall Street mega banks gets news blackout. Here's why. Okay, so here is a link to this is, and if you want to go check out this study, it's at bettermarkets.com. Wall Street's six biggest bailed out banks, their rap sheets, and their ongoing crime spree. And it says 8.2 trillion in bailouts, 351 legal actions, almost 200 billion in fines and settlements. And they've got some interesting, uh, and I love the graphic here, bail in. They, they, this, whoever wrote this article knows what these banks are planning next time. And so anyway, I showed you this chart the other day. Someone had tweeted out this chart. So let's keep going. I wanted to show you some of the things that these banks are. Let's, let, look at this. This is the six largest banks collective rap sheet. I want you to listen to some of the things. Um, that they've gotten in trouble for and been fined for. Residential mortgage-backed securities fraud, tax evasion, money laundering, manipulation of foreign currency markets, the Forex uh, and the Forex benchmark rate, short sales violations, manipulation of LIBOR, illegal derivatives check trading and reporting, fraud in the sale of auction rate securities, predatory lending, proxy fraud, loan servicing and foreclosure, foreclosure violations, bid rigging in the multi-bond market, I'm just going down the list and picking some fraud in the sale of phony credit protection services. Now, that's just a, a little list there. Now, this this uh, study also has the list by bank of their different violations. This is Bank of America. Um, let's, I'm just going to hit a few random ones. And it shows you, just so you know, it's got columns. This is pre-crash, crash-related, and post-crash. So they don't quit their illegal ways. Um, they were fined $137 million for the bank's participation in a municipal bond derivatives market bid rigging conspiracy. This is Citigroup. I'm just going to hit a few of these. Conspiracy, $925 million, conspiracy to fix foreign currency rates. Citigroup was fined and put on probation for three years. Goldman Sachs. Let's find a, good, a juicy one with them for securities law violations in connection with private label mortgage-backed securities purchased by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Let's, since they're so big, let's give them a, a new one. $120 million for manipulating and making false reports concerning the U.S. dollar international uh, swaps and derivatives association fix. Um, and then, let's see, J.P. Morgan, Jamie Dimon, such an up upstanding citizen. Um, this is $461 million for willfully, willfully, violating the Bank Secrecy Act by failing to report suspicious transactions arising out of Bernard L. Madoff's decades-long multi-billion dollar fraudulent investment scheme. In other words, folks, uh, the same guy, Jamie Dimon, who has told us that we are all, we're, in, we're a bunch of idiots and we're involved in uh, a fraudulent business, this cryptocurrency thing, it's all fraudulent. What he's really saying is that as long as, you, now remember, Bernie Madoff, not only was he in the Wall Street Club, this guy was looked to by, go, all you have to do is go watch one of the documentaries or one of the movies that's been done on this. Bernie Madoff was literally one of, he, I think he was like an advisor to the SEC. He was in the club, and because he was in the club, oh, nothing that he does is illegal or shady or money laundering, none of that. No, they're 
completely above board. Meanwhile, he was committing one of the largest frauds in the history of the world, and, and J.P. Morgan was helping him do it. And they get fined for it. Not only do they get they get fined for it, they got bailed out. As I recall, they got bailed out after this occurred. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. The world the world we live in, digital assets are going to set set the world free, and that's why these banks are so scared of them. Because digital assets are not just going to set the world free; they're going to set us all individually free. Okay. Um, and so anyway, go read this report. It's unbelievable. I, did, I, I couldn't even go through all of this. It's unbelievable what's in here. Okay. Next, this is another, um, this is the opinion of another person who does the chart analysis I wanted to show you. Um, this is from TA Academy at Kia Crypto. Winter is almost gone. I expect the last shakeout and the last bullet of bears. Then we will have at least four years of super bullish, uh, that's supper, but super bullish market ahead of us. Patience will will pay off, pay all of us well. And this is an interesting chart just because um, it shows more of the longer term of, of the chart and, and what things look like. This is back in uh, July of 2015. And then if you look at this in context, you can see where we are right now. We have so, so far to go, folks. We're talking $170 billion in this market. So, so far to go. Okay, moving along. Um, my buddy at ECOSSEXRP1, my James Bond friend, sent me this. The $2 trillion French life insurance market can now invest in crypto. This is huge, folks, because insurance companies have to invest a lot of their money, and now they've been released to invest in crypto. A newly passed act in France allows life insurance providers to invest in cryptocurrencies and tokens without any limitation on the amount that can be allocated. The PACTE law um, action plan for growth and transformation has adopted this Thursday by French uh, lawmakers, according to a local paper. Based on a rough translation, they say a dual provision of the act allows insurers to invest via specialized professional funds and crypto assets. Boom, folks, that speaks for itself. Next from Sergeant Obi One, Crypto.com secures 100,000 car, their credit card reservations before entering the US Europe market. Now, folks, this is a digital asset that I don't own, but the, their digital asset, which I think is called crypto, has been surging, and they're not even in the US market yet, okay? They're, it says before entering US and Europe. There, and it's been searching as they do this credit card. Just imagine what what's going to happen with, when Coinbase really gets going in the U.S. They haven't offered their card to the U.S. yet either. Okay, another one from Sergeant Obi One. Julian Assange receives nearly thirty thousand dollars in Bitcoin donations since his arrest. Um, he should have asked for XRP, but he's accepting Bitcoin donations. So I guess the world is about the free world is about to try to help him. Uh, with his legal fees. Okay, next. Um, this was from, this is just a good quote that I saw, which I like, from Boyd Oaks, who's a definite follower, at Boyd underscore Oaks. BitMEX CEO Arthur Hayes, but every government, I, I don't care if you're in the West or the East, will ban cash in the next five years. He said this on April 12, 2019. And I guess um, he's crediting C, CKJ, must have said that. Okay, so... Uh, these are both definite follows at CKJ Crypto News. All right, um, next, XRP Australia, at XRP underscore Australia, sent me this. I did not aware, uh, I was not aware of this, so I went and looked it up, and he's right. Um, this is about Pundi X, which I've told you I do hold. NPXS is the symbol, and you can buy it on Binance. They have a three-month-long airdrop. Now, I went and read through this. And, and basically the way I read it is that you're, if you own Pundi X, which is NPXS, until like 2021 maybe, you're going to be receiving airdrops. So if you have your money, if you own it, you'll receive more NPXS is the way I understand it. So I just want to make you aware of that. Okay, next, this is about uh, the Cardano uh, founder. Uh, this, Michael at VAL5 Links sent me this, and we really want to be the protocol that solves 
the microfinance problem and get these loans down from 35% interest to 5% interest. And I think what he's referring to here is he's referring to uh, people in the unbanked world who who don't have bank accounts. And so they have to, if they want to borrow money, they have to borrow at ridiculous rates. I think he's talking about how digital assets and in his hopes, specifically Cardano will solve that, will help to help to solve that problem. So anyway, moving along. And this was a tweet from Charles Hoskinson himself who started Cardano. For those of I'm not inclined to be the type of person who's going to go learn computer languages, but some of you out there are. He said, here's our free course on Marlowe, one of, one of Cardano's pro programming languages. And they offer this course for free for those of you that want to go and, um, and uh, check that out. He's at IOHK underscore Charles if you want to go and check this out and click this link. It's on Udemy.com is where this course is. And uh, next, I wanted to show you this as well. This was from Holo Island News, which is one of the major Holo chain um you know, one of the things we keep talking about, and those of you that don't know, if you, to own Holochain, it, the symbol's hot and you can buy it on Binance. I own a lot of Holochain. But they're going to do a swap for what's going to be called Holo Fuel, which is their digital asset, their ultimate digital asset. So they posted this because there hasn't been any updates about when they're doing that recently. Well, this is the first thing I've seen recently. Holo Island News said, upon release of Holo Beta Mainnet, both Holofuel and Hot Reserve account will be live for the first time. This ushers in a period where the following can be said. Hot can be converted into Holofuel only via the Hot Reserve. Holofuel digital, digital certificates can be redeemed via a separate uh, app. One-to-one -one parity between Hot and Holofuel is maintained since there is no separate market. As Holochain use and adoption of Holo Network grows, Demand will increase and several variables will come into play that will be will participate a transition to truly dynamic supply of holo fuel. What markets move uh, into this transitional period is the occurrence of one or more of these elements. Fiat, fiat or another crypto reserve is established. Holo fuel is, is listed on an exchange. Host credit lines are enabled. At some point during the transitional period, holo will give six months notice announcing the end of the hot to holo fuel swap. The end of the swap will also mark the end of the transitional period. And so that's some pretty good information for those of you that are like myself and you've been wondering when it was going to happen and how it's going to happen. And next, for some reason, the SEC on Sunday decided that they would issue more information about digital assets and how they are, are or are not securities. Our framework for determining whether a digital asset is a security, and they put out this paper today. Framework for framework for investment contract analysis of digital assets, and they basically are talking in this about the application of the Howey test, which is how the uh, how they determine whether something is a security or not. For the life of me, and this is gov this is governments for you, but for the life of me, um, I don't understand. If if these guys are supposed to be so smart, why it should be very simple for them to just come out and say, okay, here's the list. If it says security by it, then you are put on notice. If it doesn't, then you're free to continue to do what you're doing. Why they can't? Why they can't just keep it simple, stupid? I don't understand. I do not know. Unless there are other. There's another agenda involved, and and with governments and the and with politics and the power and the money involved. Unfortunately, there's always something else at play. Otherwise, they would keep it simple. And so this is ridiculous. But we have to continue to not get a get a straightforward answer on any of these digital assets. But I want to say one thing, and make no mistake, any. Any and all digital, I could make a case for every single digital asset on the list. If, so, if people are going to try to infer that XRP is a security, I could make a better case for any digital asset on the list to be a security. The only reason that the, the discussion, it's not a coincidence that the, the discussion is only around whether XRP is. The discussion could be around any of them, including Bitcoin and Ethereum. That discussion could be just 
Uh, it could have all, all kinds of different sides of the arguments for all of them, even more so than XRP. The only reason XRP is, is in focus with this conversation, the only reason, is because the people against XRP floated it out there and they did it intentionally. They wanted to make the, the water muddy. They wanted to make this water muddy because they know that XRP is the greatest digital asset ever created and they know that it's the one that could change the entire world and destroy Bitcoin as they know it. That is the reason that it was lobbed out there in the first place. Please remember the first time I ever heard it, a retired SEC official came out of retirement just to walk to a podium and say, well, he thinks that X, he thinks Bitcoin, I think he said Bitcoin and Ethereum, he thinks they're okay, but he thinks XRP is a security. We never heard from the guy again. He came out just for that. And if you don't think that guy was on somebody's payroll, think again. There are a lot, there's a lot of money on the line for your folks. And there's a lot of people. The hell, how many, how many Forbes contributors have we seen come out and just by chance all of them are writing anti-XRP uh, articles. I mean, it's left and right, but the, you don't very rarely do you see them come out and say anything negative about get Bitcoin. This is a war folks. There's a war on and there are, there's a, there's good guys and bad guys and there are bad guys. There are people and there are literally people being paid to come out and take shots. When you're on top, when people know you're the best, they take shots at you. That's how the world works. And unfortunately, they're taking shots at XRP. That's what this whole thing is about. But bring it on because it's the greatest digital asset ever created. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button. And tell your friends and family that XRP is the greatest digital asset ever created. Thanks for listening.